one of the things I was struggling with just before I started recording this little intro for this uh, podcast in particular with Lisa as a veto, who is the interim superintendent in Bellflower, was what would I call it? And what I actually ended up writing was that it is about the importance of the non-academic opportunities in schools. And I, I thought about, would that bother someone? I said non-academic, because I'm not talking about, you know, language arts, your math. I'm talking about the fine arts programs, the extracurricular programs, the, the CTE programs, or whatever you might call them in your province or state. And this is something that's really important to me. And I say this all the time, that there is a huge difference between our top academic students and our smartest students, because they're not always the same thing. Sometimes if students don't do well academically, and what do we consider academics? Um, you know, not necessarily the construction courses or the culinary arts courses or things like that, but those are really powerful opportunities. And I am very blessed that I not only participated um, in many fine arts programs as a kid, but also extracurricular, uh, whether it was, you know, um, sports, um, other things. And a lot of those things shape me. And the reason why it is so important for me to highlight this and that I love that Lisa talked about this was this is the reason many kids go to school. It's not for the language arts classes, not for the math classes, but they end up doing better in those classes because they build confidence in those other areas that a lot of schools are cutting over the years. They're because they're focusing more on kids ability to read and write and of course the ability to read and write is crucial but a kid will never learn to read and write if they don't show up to school because they hate it and so we have to kind of think about how we highlight those programs and how much they shape who we are today i would not be doing the work i was do i am doing today if it wasn't for my coaches in sports and it wasn't for the wonderful fine arts teachers i had over the years so when we don't actually highlight those things, if we don't put them in the forefront, and especially in a world where we can get all the information we're all, but those things, those skills are really only, they're very human and um, you have to experience them to learn them. I think it's wonderful that Lisa and Bellflower are, are focusing on this while also putting an importance on academics. It's not one or the other, but actually how do they support both? So. When I say the idea of non-academic opportunities, I don't want anyone thinking that I think less of them. In fact, I think um, that they create incredible opportunities that our kids should have. And so you're going to love this podcast with interim superintendent Lisa as a veto talking about the incredible things that are happening in Bellflower. I love the pride she had in her district. And I wish, you know, every superintendent, every administrator had this talking about all the things that they offer kids to be successful in our world today, because um, not every kid in our school doesn't have to walk out being good at the same thing. Every kid in our school should walk out knowing they're good at something and how do they find those passions and they're doing a wonderful job in Bellflower. I know you're gonna love this podcast. Thank you for being here. Welcome back to another episode of the Innovators Mindset Podcast. Hey everyone, this is George Cross, and welcome back to another episode of the Innovators Mindset Podcast. I am so blessed to have the interim superintendent of Bellflower Unified, actually in California. I'll be joining you all for your opening day in August. So uh, this is a great way for me to learn more about the district, learn more about the superintendent, kind of the hopes for the day, but just kind of learn more about your community, which I have been learning a ton about, and you're absolutely amazing. So uh, my guest today is Lisa Azevedo. Uh, who is the interim superintendent. And so I have loved talking to you and uh, you are, you're like not, <laughs> you're Thank like you so, so not stuffy for a superintendent. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> oh, yes. No, I don't want to be stuffy. <laughs> no, you're like just so chill and I love it. Maybe it's like a California vibe going on. I don't know what's going on, but like, <laughs> I, I love talking to Lisa and Lisa's got, you know, a couple people there behind. I don't know if they want it. We'll give them a little, we'll give them a little shout, shout out. out. Yeah, a little <laughs> shout out. So. Uh, I am so pumped, but Lisa, if you, I know um, many people probably obviously know your your career history uh, in Bellflower, but if you can kind of just refresh uh, the, the audience on this, tell us who you are, what you do today, and how you got there. I think it's a great place to start. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you for the introduction. I am very blessed to be serving as the interim superintendent for Bellflower Unified. This is my 30th year. I started when I was five, everyone. Um, <laughs> 
Uh huh. Uh, yeah. So I started working for the district as a middle school teacher at Mayfair Middle School. Taught math and science. Was a core teacher. Loved it. Um, was fortunate to come to the district office to work on a special program, which led me then into administration. I was an elementary assistant principal, an elementary principal, a high school principal, and then up to the district office as assistant superintendent. I did that for a good amount of time and then um, was very fortunate to open a brand new pro program called California Advancing Pathways for Students. That's a, a career tech ed program or an ROP program that serviced Bellflower, Linwood, and Paramount. And I've been doing that for the last seven years. And here I am sitting with you today. I love it. And we're going to talk about some of those programs because like when you were telling me it was like a little too good to be true, which is like, I kind of want to be a kid in your school district. Which is so, do so do I. So do I. Yeah, yeah. Like it is actually really, really cool. So we'll get to that in a second. But I, I do have a question. Um, yeah. I don't, I, you know, I taught middle school. I loved it. But mm -hmm. when I first got an education, I was like, hey, I'll teach elementary. I'll teach high school. But I am not teaching middle school. Right. There's, and so it's a little bit different dynamic to think about that. Now, when I actually did it, I loved it. It was probably, it's probably one of my favorite things, but like, what made you want to become a middle school teacher specifically? Because it's kind of like, I don't know, it's a little bit, I don't know, it's not, it's like a I, little bit different. Yes. I love them. I understand what you're saying. Yeah, Cause some yeah. people have a fear of middle school. I love them. I think I love them because they're still a ball of energy. Yeah they're they're still it's a young mind they're a ball of energy so you're constantly shifting what you're doing um they're really into moving around they can't sit still yet but i loved that about them um it's a transitional period so sometimes it's difficult for them they're in between that elementary um youngster moving on to that high school setting so you're kind of helping them transition from that elementary to the high school um, atmosphere, but I happen to love it. You have to have a lot of patience, obviously. Yeah. Um, and you need to understand that the kids are going to move around. They're still in middle school. You know, okay. So I'm like, I always wonder, I'm like, why was I like, so like terrified of teaching middle school? And then I was like, oh, because I remember how I was <laughs> I'm like the last person I want to deal with was someone like me. And, and then, and actually when I, I, I started doing it, I, you know, there's a lot of stuff that, you know, I was a, I was a troubled kid when I was in middle school. And then when I had students at that same age and they would do mm -hmm. stuff, I'm like, oh yeah, I remember. I remember I did that yeah. and why I did that. And so like, it was you just got patience. Yeah. Like it was, you know, it was, you know, I was like, yeah, like, Hey, and then it was like an understanding. And I remember sometimes they're like, oh, I did this horrible thing. I'm like, you just saw what I did <laughs> when I was your age. It was a million times worse. So uh, I, I love that. So we, I, I do want to ask you. Um, I know you have this, this passion, um, for, you know, some of the CTE, um, things that are happening. And one of the things you mentioned is that you have an aviation program. And when I started asking yeah. about it, I was like, no, <laughs> there's no way that's legit. So talk about like some of your, like the overall CTE program, uh, at Bellflower, but some of the really unique things that I, like, I, I honestly, I've never heard of in any school district, um, other than when you mentioned it today. Yeah, so we are very fortunate. We started an aviation program. Um, this will be our second year. We actually teach students how to fly drones and they can earn their part 107 license so they could work for maybe a real estate organization, the fire department, law enforcement. Um, there are many different avenues for that um, drone flying at this point, mm -hmm. or they can learn to fly planes. So we are taking them through flight instruction. We have a full Redbird installation lab. Um, it's an amazing facility. It's an amazing classroom. Our kids will learn how to fly a plane if that's what they choose to do. And we will support them to do that. By the time they graduate high school, if they start with us as a freshman, by the time they graduate high school, they will have earned their private pilot license. So really, it, it, yeah, it's an amazing opportunity. Yeah. That is so but cool. Cause oh, it, go ahead. I'm sorry. For, for many, for many people, um, Becoming a pilot is out of reach because of the cost of yeah. getting hours, right? Of that. Yes. And I, like, I don't know enough about the industry. I, that's kind of just what I've heard. And so I didn't, I've never heard of this being offered, you know, like, how did you, how did that come to fruition? I, I don't know if you know that, like, how did that, how did that, how did this even happen? Yeah. So, um, we wrote a grant 
to fund the particular program. So lots of the opportunities that we have within our district have been provided by grants. So for example, we have a bioanimator lab where kids learn how to program robots. They use all different kinds of 3D equipment. Um, they use laser cutters, CAD machines, mm -hmm. software. Um, it's all grant funded. So any one of these unique opportunities, right. we've really been thoughtful about the process of how to bring it to the district and then looked for a resource to help support it. I love it. That is, that is just such a, a cool opportunity, right? Like when, you, when you're telling us, I don't know if I would do it. I don't know. <laughs> oh, I think you should come into the aviation lab. I want to see it. I want to see yeah. it. I don't know. I'm like a little bit, I'm, you know, I'm a tall guy and I'm also scared of heights. So like, I don't know. I'm a, also a terrible flyer. So, but it is such a cool thing. And I just, I, I love it's one of the things that's really kind of opening up doors for kids that um, I don't know, they always get the opportunity to um, have. Uh, the other thing that you mentioned, and this is very near and dear to my heart. So I'm going to talk about this and ask you more about it. You, you, you had such a pride in the fine arts program that you have uh, in Bellflower. Uh, I, I promise you, I would have never, ever been able to speak to an audience in the way that I could today. Uh, if it wasn't for my grade three teacher, Cindy Penrose, who was also my kindergarten grade eight uh, music teacher, and she gave me such a confidence. I remember her like going as, at the end of like, um, <laughs> like a little, it uh -huh. just like it, it. And so every time I talk to, you know, um, people in fine arts programs, and I feel like they, they don't necessarily get enough attention. Um, I'm very grateful because a lot of the things that we talk about in schools actually don't have to do with that, but a lot of the skills we need do have everything to do with what we learn in the fine arts program. So tell me a little bit about some of the stuff that's being offered and what's happening in your schools with fine arts. Instrumental programs, um, we have marching band and color guard and all of those competitive events with our vocal programs. Our students tour the country singing for different groups and all of that really starts at the elementary level and they move mm -hmm. those kids up from elementary through the high school. That, that like that is like just absolutely amazing to me because I I just loved there was something I really look forward to there is such a I don't know if that's the right word there was such a discipline I learned from it and um, a presence right they teach you how to present uh, yourself and feel comfortable in front of others right, like, like it's actually one of the things that I don't think fine arts teachers get enough is the importance of working on a team, like actually feeding off each other, connecting, you know, um, mm -hmm. I remember I did, you said, you mentioned you were a band kid. I played band for about a year and I played bass guitar, which is like ter Like, again, remember I said I was the worst kid ever in middle school. And, uh, I, you know, give a bad kid an amp <laughs> where he could turn it up and drown out everybody. Like uh -huh. my, my band teacher, I remember Mr. Howie, sorry, Mr. Howie. Uh, I actually, yeah, so I was a little bit of a terror, but you you learn so many things. Like you learn how to work with people. You learn that presence to teach you a lot about, you know, um, like a lot of the fine art stuff really taught me about public speaking, even though it wasn't intentionally taught, but it was just something a part of it. So I love that you have that pride uh, in that too. So I, uh, it, we mentioned this, I'm actually coming out to Bellflower. Yes. Uh, I get to really kind of, uh, one of the things that's really important to me and that's why I do this, I don't want people just kind of learning from me on that day. Uh, I know it's the start of the year, uh, but really it's a really good opportunity for me to learn from all of you, uh, learn some things. And this is one of the reasons we do the podcast. But mm -hmm. if I, here's, I didn't tell you I was gonna ask you this question. So this, this is actually putting me on the spot more than you. But okay. if I'm successful <laughs> that day, what does that look like to you? Like, how do you, like, what would deem, and I think this, you know, put some accountability on me. If I'm successful working with your staff, what does that look like to you? People are walking out as a team. People are walking out feeling appreciated, knowing that they are all part of this district, knowing that what they're doing is important and valued um, by myself, by the board members, by the community as a whole. I, I think that my hope would be that this was a special time set aside for them to realize that we're all in this together. Our job is to serve our students. Our job is to serve the community. So I would hope that they would walk out that door that day feeling inspired, feeling hopeful, feeling understood, and feeling appreciated as part of a team member. 
Yeah, and I know this is actually, am I wrong here? I'm pretty sure this is like, you haven't done this in a while, right? Many years, many, many years. Yeah, and like when we were talking about this, I think one of the things is that it was a really great opportunity to build people, bring people together, but also to honor the incredible work that's being done in Bellflower. And I think that's something that I'm really looking forward to, um, to, to being there, to joining you all. I, one of the things that really tells me a lot about a superintendent is when I feel they have pride in their district, right? Mm -hmm. That, you know, of course we can all get better, but really um, excited about the work that's already happening. Cause I think we don't spend enough time honoring that. And from not just this podcast, but like from the get go, I was like, oh, this is like, this is a special place. So I'm excited. I'm excited to be with you all. Um, I'm excited to meet you in person. I'm going to actually, are you going to like, you mentioned you played clarinet. Are you going to like yes. break out some clarinet on that first day? Maybe do a little. Oh. Goodness, Kenny G ish <laughs> thing going on or what? Like, what's going on? I'm, I'm expecting a little clarinet intro. Well, that's very <laughs> interesting. I haven't touched a clarinet in many years. I'll have to tell you, I played that clarinet from elementary all through high school. I was in the marching band. So maybe I can do a little march for you. <laughs> what about that clarinet? I'd have to remember if I can play a tune on that thing. It's been a while. Well, <laughs> listen, great. hey, we're recording this July 2nd. So you got time to, to you know. <laughs> That's oh, yeah. Back a little yeah. bit, though. So. Yeah. <laughs> That's good. All right. Okay. I'm expecting a little clarinet. So just, just so you know, a little clarinet intro up there. But Lisa, thanks it. so much for being on the podcast. Bellflower, I can't wait to see you all. Um, thank you, everyone, for listening. I hope you have a wonderful day. Take care. Thank you. Thank you.